if you're starting to tackle some simple electrical projects around your home, like replacing an outlet, upgrading a simple switch to a dimmer switch, or replacing a light fixture, you need the eight tools I'm going to show you in this video to make that project successful. It's Dave from Upgrade Your Home DIY, and trust me, I have been where you are right now. You want to tackle some electrical projects in your home, but you need to make sure you have the right tools. Now, I've bought and used plenty of tools, and the ones I'm going to show you in this video are what I consider to be the essential eight. If you do want to pick up any of the tools I talk about, the links for them are th down in the description below. Let's dive in, and I want to start where every electrical project should start, which is with safety. The one thing that scares a lot of people about electrical projects is touching a live wire and getting shocked. This is a valid concern. I've done it myself and I can tell you it's not a lot of fun. So I suggest you pick up this Sperry ET6102 voltage tester. I did a whole video on how you can use this tester to make sure that the outlet, switch, or wires you want to work on do not have power running to them so you won't touch a live wire and get shocked. I'll link to that video up in the top corner. Now use this tester to make sure you turn off the correct circuit breaker before you start working on any electrical outlets, switches, or wires in your home. This allows you to tackle those electrical projects with confidence. Once you know you can safely work on your project, the first tool you reach for is a flathead screwdriver. This is what you use to take the faceplate off of an outlet, a switch, or take off a multi-gain switch plate. Now there are many different sizes. The one I recommend you get is a 3 16 inch flathead screwdriver because that fits the screws on switch plates. If you already have a set of screwdrivers, you've probably got a flathead screwdriver that's either this size or similar enough that it's going to work well for you. Once you get the faceplate off, you're next going to reach for a number one square screwdriver. This is what you use to unscrew those screws that hold the outlet or the switch to the box. Now in some places this is called a number one Robertson screwdriver. And oftentimes in square screwdrivers they make the handles different colors to denote the different sizes. And a number one square screwdriver is a green handle. This is also the screwdriver you will use to unscrew the terminal screws on the side of an outlet or a switch. Again, if you have a screwdriver set, this might be one of those that's already included. Once the switch or outlet is out of the box, then you're going to need a number two square screwdriver. This is what you use for the screws on the box, like the mounting screws for an octagonal box, the ground screw at the back of a, a metal box, or the cable clamp screw that holds the Romex cable in on a metal box. Again, some areas call this a number two Robertson screwdriver, and the handle color for number two square screwdrivers is red. If you have a screwdriver collection, again, this might be in that set of screwdrivers you already have. But check to verify the sizes both number one and number two square screwdrivers are in that collection. What i found a lot of times is that these collections only have one or the other in that collection. So double check your set of screwdrivers. Now some of you might be wondering, is a multi-bit screwdriver a good alternative to having each of these individual screwdrivers? Well, it might be. Many of them have both the flathead and the square head screwdriver bits as part of the kit. The challenge is, is that once you start doing more than just a couple of projects, it becomes a hassle to be changing that bit out every time you have to switch from one bit to the other as you're doing your electrical projects. Often it's just easier to have separate screwdrivers and grab the correct one when you need it. Once the switcher outlet is out of the box, we're going to need some tools to deal with the wires in that box. So let's look at some of those tools. First might be my favorite electrical tool of all, these Milwaukee 6-in-1 electrician's pliers. Now the name makes it sound like these are only for professionals, but I have found them very useful because I've done more than just a few electrical projects around the house. It can cut cable, 
strip wires, create J hooks, and twist wires. I did a whole video on this tool and I'll link to it up in the top corner. Now this for me has replaced three tools that I used to use. A separate wire cutter, pliers, and wire stripper. If you have all three, that's great. But I think you'll find as I did, as you do more electrical projects, having just one tool makes the project go faster. You're also gonna need needle nose pliers. These allow you to hold a wire in a box, bend and unbend wires, and pull wires off of terminal screws. They certainly save you time and a little bit of pain from having to do this with your hands. Now, if you already have needle nose pliers, that's great. I also think you need a utility knife. I like the Olfa knife that has replaceable blades. It works well for cutting open those hard to open dimmer switch packages or for cutting the sheathing off of Romex cable. It also has a locking knob that locks the blade in place so it doesn't slip and you don't hurt yourself. Now, if you have another utility knife already, then that's probably gonna work for your electrical projects. The last tool you need is a way to connect wires to each other. Often when you're working in an outlet box or a switch box, you need to connect wires together, whether that is connecting all the neutrals together in a switch box, or whether that might be connecting some uh, live wires with a pigtail in an outlet box. Now, I prefer WAGO connectors, and I recommend them for those starting with electrical projects in their home. They use levers to hold the wire in place, and it's easy to see if the wires are properly contacting the bar inside. And they work for the common 12 gauge and 14 gauge wires that we find in our homes. Now they are newer to the market here in North America, but they have been used in other parts of the world for decades and they have all the proper certifications to be safely used in our homes. The alternative are the traditional wire nuts. You twist the wires together and then you twist the wire nut on to those twisted wires. Now wire nuts come in many different sizes, so you have to get the size that is appropriate for the number of wires and the size of the wires that you're going to be connecting together. Now, if you already have a number of wire nuts around, just check that they're gonna work for the situation that you wanna use them in. So there you go. Those are the eight tools I think you need to have if you're tackling simple electrical projects around your house. You might be replacing an outlet or a switch maybe upgrading a simple switch to a dimmer switch or a smart switch, maybe upgrading an outlet to a USB charging outlet or changing a light fixture. Are there other tools that you found useful for these type of simple electrical projects? If so, put them in the comments down below so I know and everybody else who's reading those comments can learn from your experience. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button down below. So other homeowners who are starting to tackle electrical projects in their home can find this video. If you enjoyed the information in this video, check out these other videos that I think you'll find helpful. Subscribe to the channel so you get notified when I publish new videos. Thanks again for watching.